There we go. Good morning, everybody. Please accept my apologies for the delay. I had completely forgotten about our daylight savings. Panama doesn't have daylight savings. So anyway, good morning to everyone. I'm always curious to know where folks are from. You've got the chat function that works here. And so by all means, check in. Uh, we've got some people, look, looks like only 24 people right now, but uh, yeah, so welcome. Welcome everybody. We've got Matthew Marks here. Hello. Our Beaches agent, come slide a little closer here, Matthew. Sure. So guys, the format today is, I've been doing this for 13 years. Uh, Matthew's been in Panama for 10 years and has been running our, our beaches and mountains area since last year. And we get a lot of the same questions. So the idea today is to give you all a sense of what to expect in Coronado. We're gonna answer all of your questions. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, again, I've got Matthew Marks here to my, to my right. And the first question, very general question is, is where is Coronado, Matthew, and, and, and how do you get there? Well, Coronado is about an hour outside of Panama City, uh, just heading west on the Inter-Americana Highway. Uh, very easy to get to. If you rent a car, you can head out there. It's just a straight shot down the Inter-Americana Highway. You'll cross over the uh, Panama Canal and then uh, through a couple winding roads, through the towns, a uh, couple mountain passes, and you'll be in Coronado in about 60 minutes. Okay, cool. So about an hour. I mean, you know, I've been out to Coronado a hundred times for the folks that are not um, familiar with that area. What about traffic, man? I mean, Friday afternoon, it gets a little gnarly, no? Yeah, Friday afternoon, it does get a little hectic going out there. Uh, mainly just getting outside of the city. You have a lot of the folks that live in Panama City that spend their weekends out on their beach homes in Coronado and some of the surrounding areas. So that's when you're prime time traffic. If you can avoid it, avoid it. Same thing goes for during the week, actually. Uh, if you're heading out there during rush hour, there are some suburbs outside of Panama City. Uh, so you're going to hit some heavier traffic than if you were to leave during midday. Got you. Yep. And, you know, I recall, Matthew, that they're doing some uh, some projects right now, right? We've got the, uh, the bridge over the Americas. So right now, guys, there's two bridges right. that leave Panama City, right? But so what's what's the plan? How is that traffic going to get fixed? Well, there's, there's actually two bridges that leave Panama City. Uh, there's a third that goes out from the Cologne side to cross the canal. So right now they're building a fourth bridge, a fourth bridge that's going to take everyone over the canal. So it'll help alleviate some of that traffic. Uh, another project that's going on is they're building a corridor that, that's what they're calling their beach corridor. That's going to pass through, pass some of the uh, suburbs that, that surround Panama City that will help alleviate the traffic leaving towards the beaches as well. Awesome. Okay, good. So... So it sounds like an hour to get there right now, mm -hmm. kind of a scenic drive. You know, you drive through the mountains, you drive along the ocean. And uh, for again, for those folks that have never been here, it's pretty easy drive. It's literally like two turns. You leave the city, you know, you, you make your turn to get out of the city, you head west. And an hour later, you're in Coronado. And you can see on this map here, guys, on our presentation that um, we've got a, a, quite a bit of other towns in the area. So for the purpose of today, we're talking about Coronado, but really it's including all the beaches areas like, and help me where I'm missing out here, Matt. Uh, we've got Gorgona, San Carlos, um, Buenaventura is out that That's way. Right. And we're going to get into the details of, of each one a little bit today uh, and happy to get into the details uh, in the question and answer if we haven't covered it. So Anything else to add about how, how you get to Coronado? Well, you have the option of also, if you're not, if you don't feel comfortable driving in a foreign country, um, you can take a bus out there from the national terminal at Ancon, at, I'm sorry, at the Albrook mall. It costs you about $4 and the bus will take you right out to the Coronado or any of those beach communities that you mentioned. Okay, cool. Perfect. So let's see, you can also hire a driver, for yep. example, um, I mean, I've taken an Uber about halfway and it cost me about 50 bucks. So figure hundred bucks one way, or you can get a driver round trip for the day, $150, take you out there, stop, get lunch, go visit the mountains, et cetera. So sure. yeah, there's, there's a bunch of different ways to get out there. But at the end of the day, it's about an hour from Panama city. So next question, how often, let's say I live at the beach, mm -hmm. talk to me about these residents and how often they they end up having to go to the city because what I've found and Matthew again is our expert but folks that choose to live in the beach 
are kind of 50 50 on the city some of them hate the city hate any city they say <laughs> you know what i don't even want to deal with it um but for those that appreciate coming to the city or you know still have some ties to the city why would they come into the city and, and how often do you think they'd come in well if you were asking me this question a few years ago i'd say you're coming into the city a couple of times a month uh you're gonna do price mart for your big shopping which is similar to like a costco or a price club um you're gonna come into doctor's visit or or just for some entertainment uh but nowadays coronado has a has a movie theater uh the infrastructure has grown tremendously so you have all the services out there you have doctors uh now there's four major supermarkets out in coronado uh, the four major chains from panama city so really if you don't want to come into the city you don't have to uh but i do i do have some friends that live out in that area that do find themselves coming to the back to the city you know once a week or once every other week for entertainment to go to a nice restaurant uh to stroll down the cinta costera uh enjoy a, a play or a show anything like that just entertainment okay cool so it sounds like you don't really have to get into the city that often um but you know it, it's there if you need it that's exactly right cool yeah and you know i remember even in chorrera uh which is about uh, almost halfway it's a little bit closer to the city than it is coronado figure you know 25 minutes outside of the city so 35 minutes from from coronado mm -hmm. chorrera now has like price mart big hospitals super nice schools um so yeah i mean that's also an option um when you're out there okay cool so so what's the deal i mean is it only as they say gringos only people from america <laughs> united states in coronado or what's what's the demographic who you know you're walking around a supermarket you're going to a restaurant in coronado you're out playing around to golf who are you going to see out there what who, who lives there well, it is Panama, so you do have local Panamanians that live out there. Sure. Um, and as you mentioned, the gringos, it's a very large expat community. Um, but we're not going to just say United States. It's not just Canada. You're getting a lot of Europeans going out there right now uh, this, uh, from Spain, Germany, uh, even even United Kingdom. People are just trying to get out of Brexit. Interesting. Okay, so you've got Europeans, you've got North Americans, mm -hmm. U.S. and Canadian. Do they have kind of like little neighborhoods where it's like, this is the Americans, this is the Italians, this is the, or are they kind of all just mix? It's like a melting pot. Cool. No, yeah. And you know, I mean, that's what's kind of nice about Panama in general. What I've found is that Panamanians tend to accept foreigners. I mean, shoot, mm -hmm. from day one, when Panamanian, well, Panama existed, it used to be Colombia, then it became Panama. You already had a ton of French, a ton of Americans, and obviously former Colombians living there so it's like this country was started on immigration it started with a huge mix of foreigners the day it became panama and it's nice i mean you you don't have again 13 years two guys from the united states um uh, both with you know uh my panamanian wife panamanian girlfriend um it's it's extremely accepting so yeah i think that's one of the reasons it's such a expat um destination you know, you don't get any pushback. Um, okay, cool. What about lifestyle in Coronado in terms of like, are these people all working or they're like, you know, people that say video commute or are they all retirees or what's the deal? Well, it's, it's really, it's a case by case scenario. Yeah. Uh, you have some people that come down here that say, I've worked my entire life. I'm ready to relax, enjoy the fruits of my labor. And just retire play golf swim whatever whatever hobby they're into yeah uh but then you have some other people that came down here and they start to get the itch after after mm -hmm. a while and they see opportunity and they decide to jump into that and they start start their own business where they where they they see a niche that they can fill sure yeah maybe something that's worked in their home country that they say you know what i'm gonna bring you know electric scooters or <laughs> you know the little frozen ice cream dots yeah no it, i can't tell you in the city how many retirees folks came down here thinking they were going to retire and ended up you know opening up a little boutique restaurant or yeah just getting into something so okay cool well yeah okay what do they do <laughs> so we talked about sort of the the income side of it which is you know some of them end up uh, working from home uh working in a local business not working at all what about fun things? I mean, on a Saturday morning or shoot, if you're a retiree on a Tuesday morning, 
Uh, what are these guys going to go out and get into? How, how do they fill their days? Well, that picture is a perfect example. You have the beach right there. Yep. Uh, so a lot of people, they let, you know, a nice long stroll on the beach, dip your toes in the ocean every day. Uh, swimming pools are very common here as well. So if you don't enjoy the ocean, you have the option of the swimming pool. Golf courses, uh, Coronado has its own private golf course or semi-private golf course. Um, tennis is big here. A, even even pickleball. What is pickleball? What is that? Pickleball is if you were to combine tennis and and uh, ping pong. So it's a it's a smaller court than tennis, but it's and it's it's similar to ping pong where the ball has to bounce and you hit it over and it's huge in the beaches area. There are groups of people playing every day. There you go. Pickleballers unite in <laughs> Coronado. And again, guys, when we say Coronado, we're talking about the whole region. Yeah. Uh, you figure from Gorgona, which is, or even Chame, which is the easternmost beach town, i.e. the closest to the city, from Coronado to Chame, the road down to Chame is, what, 15 minutes, something like that? Yeah. And from Coronado out to Buenaventura is 25 minutes? Yeah, I'd put it closer to 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Okay, so we've got like a 40-minute radius um, and not even to mention, and sorry, Matthew, I don't know if you did mention, but you know, you got these mountain communities and mountain towns that you can pop up to that'll take you a 30 minute drive, 40 minute drive. You go up to El Valle, you go up to Chica, a really cool, not to mention even road trip out to Chiriqui, Boquete, uh, the rivers out there, waterfalls. So no, it's, it's very eco-friendly, eco-tourism. People are into the outdoors. But by the same token, you get such a big community of folks. Um, you know, you have book clubs. You have volunteer clubs. You have exercise and fitness groups. It's kind of like what you would do in whatever, Florida, Mallorca, Portugal. Like-minded people, right? Okay, cool. Um, all right. So talk to me about, talk to us mm -hmm. about Coronado in terms of the weather, the locals, the crime, what do they have out there? It's a big question. Sure. Um, but yeah, weather, let's talk about the weather. Does it rain a lot in Coronado? Well, you got hurricanes, <laughs> no hurricanes. Um, Coronado is, is, it's one of the driest areas we have in the country. So right now is, is we're in the middle of our dry season. You're not going to see any rain right now. Uh, but even during rainy season, it's not like the Pacific Northwest where it's going to rain all day, every day. Sure. It's going to rain for 30 minutes, maybe an hour, and then people just go on with their day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely, Matt. And, you know, they, they actually call it El Arco Seco, which is the dry belt. And that's one of the more dry areas in, in Panama. Um, but, hey, it rains enough to stay green. <laughs> um, you've also got no hurricanes ever anywhere in Panama. Nope. For the win. Um, we talked a little bit about locals. Um, let's see. What about crime? I mean, is crime an issue out there? Mm, I would say no. There's, uh, You can't say there's no crime, but crime right. is very low. Um, it's not a major city. Everyone knows each other. It's like an old town where, you know, everyone knows their neighbor. Yeah, no, that's true. But, uh, you know, to be totally for honest, mm -hmm. um, where we've seen crime is – with people who leave their homes for weeks or months at a time. And the guy who's driving by, maybe he's a contractor working on the project next door. And he sort of gets a sense that this house is kind of empty. You will get some break-ins if you leave your place unattended for a month or two at a time. It's not going to happen automatically. Like, hey, if it's empty, plan on it. But uh, it's a consideration. Mm -hmm. So what we recommend to our clients is, have a house sitter, have somebody to pop by, you know, leave the lights on, um, that kind of thing. Just to, like you would do in any sort of um, foreign beach community, I think. Um, now, there are gated communities within Coronado where that's completely non-issue. You know, you don't have to worry about that at all. And obviously, condos, no issue. I'm talking about more sort of a remote beach house. Maybe there's nobody around you, that kind of thing. Um you know, and, and every year you do hear about the occasional like armed, you know, like people come in with, you know, a gun. Uh, it doesn't happen that often and it always makes the press, but it's not a utopia. I mean, you still have to, you know, when you have workers come in, you don't want to say have stacks of hundred dollars and jewels on the, on the kitchen table. But anyway, it's, 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 it is still very considered safe, same in the city. 
um, it's 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 almost a non-issue, but you know you got to keep your wits about you because it's still um, Latin America. Conveniences we talked about. You yeah. know, you you mentioned those supermarkets, and are these like American sort of European style supermarkets, or are these like little tiny supermarkets with like only processed cheese and eggs and milk, or what's what's the deal? Sure. Well, the the four major supermarkets are similar to what you would have in the United States. Uh, they're large chains. They carry just about every product you can imagine. You have something like Reba Smith that is a little more specialized, uh, where they bring in a lot of the American brands that we're used to seeing. You have another one, Machitaso, which what I, I would compare to a Walmart. Uh, the one in, in Coronado specifically is three stories. The, the whole bottom floor is entire supermarket. And then the second and third floor are the other uh, items you may need for your house, you know, home goods, televisions, stereos. Uh, even clothing the works yeah and you know as matt alluded to earlier in the presentation uh we've both been here for quite some time and man when i got here it was so hard to for example find craft beer you know like good stouts and porters etc uh, big selection of wine imported cheese thai food um all of that you have now and it's just like oh uh, it's great the economy has filled in the gaps, uh, expats, and also Panamanians have been traveling so much in these last 10 years that they get a taste and they maybe they, they're they importers and they go and they, they test the market and it works. So, and guys, we have been getting some questions here. Um, you know, I, I appreciate you guys checking in. And let me just run through them real quick here. Awesome. No, yeah, they're just popping in as we go. And we will also, um, answer all the questions at the end. So keep them coming. Uh, I'll get to these. We'll get to these. Um, all right. So next slide here. Is Coronado expensive? And, you know, you can talk in terms of, um, well, let, let me ask you some specific questions. Restaurants. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're from South Florida. Um, you know, do you have to spend 100 and be able to eat a full dinner on like $8? What's the deal with food? Sure. Well, just like anything else uh, with cost of living anywhere in the world, it's what you do. It's your lifestyle, what you make of it. Uh, a, a couple could go out to dinner and you could eat for under $30. If you're going to throw in a couple glasses of wine, that's going to bring it up to $35, maybe even 40, depending on how many glasses you have. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. And is that sort of like a mid range restaurant? Is that a cheap restaurant? High end? I'd say that's on the higher end of things. Uh, if you're going to go to a normal restaurant, um, you're going to look at about eight to ten dollars a plate, and uh, so a couple would eat for about twenty twenty five dollars. Um, wait, is that that's mid range or low end? Say that again. That would be mid range. Mid range. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that sounds about right. And man, if you want to save money, eat where the locals eat. That's right. You know, um, they have these things called fondas. Uh, they're sort of mom and pop little restaurants that have a menu of like five things. Lunch six dollars. If they're open for dinner. Eight dollars. Sometimes bring your own beer. Sometimes they'll sell canned beer for what a dollar. Yep. Yeah, glass of wine for three dollars. So, but then again, you can also go to a primarily expat white dinner table or white white white. What's the word? Tablecloth. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, white tablecloth. Um, and you know, I mean, you could spend a hundred bucks, uh, a couple appetizers, a bottle of wine, entrees for fifteen dollars. You know, it's uh, it it has a range for everyone. So let's stop and go down some questions here. And um, we've still got quite a few slides left, but um, I want to make sure to attend everybody's question. Sue, update on coronavirus. It's here. Um, <laughs> it's kind of. I haven't been in the states in a while. I'm of course watching the media, like everyone is these days. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not chaos here. It's not panic here. Uh, people definitely went out and bought a bunch of gel and a bunch of, um, you know, hand sanitizer and stuff like that. But the supermarkets are not empty. That's the advantage of living on the canal and in a free trade zone where you've got, um, goods for days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like literally, uh, these inventory levels are stocked here because we are the main distribution point for a lot of other Central American countries. So it's like we've got toilet paper for five countries worth, <laughs> and but it's here. Uh, there are 24 confirmed cases. Our first death happened um, 
like a couple of days ago. So we have not avoided it. Um, everybody is being very thoughtful. Panama Equity is working from home. Uh, we're trying to be, you know, res socially responsible by not spreading. But uh, yeah, it's here. It's of course being talked about. Um, so that's the deal. Um, so let's see. Oh, you know, Sarah added a good point um, about demographics. Mm -hmm. um, she mentioned South Africa and South Americans, and it's totally true. We get a lot of South Africans very recently in the last year or so, and also South Americans. I mean, guys from Colombia, uh, families from Peru, um, Bolivia, all of these different countries that they're just kind of, they're over it, you know, either they're over being cold, they're over worrying about safety, over worrying about the stability of their currency, like Brazil has been very volatile. Um, the Colombian peso has actually also been up and down, up and down versus the dollar. It's kind of like, you know, it's, 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 it's fairly stable. Um, yeah. Okay. So Eliezer said Coronado has a reputation for blocking the beach access. Um, I mean, you have houses, private houses. Technically, the beach has to be public access. You cannot, as a developer, close off the beach. And that's kind of nice about Coronado as men. And Matthew can attest to this. You can go to the beach sometimes and be the only person there. Mm -hmm. You can walk for a kilometer on a Wednesday afternoon and maybe see a couple more couples strolling. But the coastline is so spread out that you got, again, Coronado, Gorgona, Chame, Buenaventura, all of these coastlines all along the Pacific. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's the deal. Okay, cool. And then we just had folks checking in. Fun. Um, you know, we've got Ireland, Alabama, Arkansas, Canada, Toronto, Denver. Um, you guys are great. Let's keep going. <laughs> what is the property market like in Coronado? Um, it's a very general question. Yeah. So what, talk to us about that. I mean, that depends on what market you're in. You know, are you looking for an investment where you're going to be renting it out like an Airbnb? Uh -huh. uh, are you looking for a place where you're going to retire? Um, a luxury, uh, something mid-range? That really all just depends. Right now, it is a buyer's market, um, but we're, we're seeing some movement on there lately. Okay, so sure. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's what, you, what you need if you're an investor, if you're an end right. user. So to fill in some gaps here, we've got, of course, you've got beach houses, right? I mean, what what would I pay for a, a 2,000 square foot home or, you know, 180 meters, mm -hmm. uh, maybe on a lot of, let's call it 1,000 a, a, a meters. So that's, um, you know, quarter of an acre lot, gated community, house that's maybe 10 years old uh, with a swimming pool. What am I going to pay? That's that's maybe a five minute walk from the beach. What's, what's that going to cost me more or less? I mean, that, that really runs the gamut, but you're looking around 300, 350. Yeah. Um, and then something that's been completely remodeled, obviously will be a little more. Okay, cool. So, I mean, 350. So, so in terms of the market, if I'm looking at properties online for 350,000, what do you think would be an offer? Just very general terms. Like, you know, you said it's a buyer's market. Mm -hmm. Somebody's asking 350. Um, you know, what, what in a general sense, would you say would be a good, good offer on sure. something like that? And, and again, this is very general. You, you have to gauge how motivated someone is to sell. Um, if they're, if they're asking 350, I, I'd say you come in around, around 320 and open up the doors to negotiation. Yeah. And everybody on this call, I'm sure has bought and sold property before. Uh, it's also a function of how good. How, how aggressive is that 350 to begin with? Mm -hmm. You know, like if all the other houses are 400 and this one's at 350, then yeah, 320. If all the other houses are at 350 in Coronado area, I mean, I would even think maybe definitely north of 300, but, you know, and figure close around like what Matt's saying, 320, 330, something like that. So figure about 10, come in at 10% at, at or less or more. Um, but yeah, Matt's you're in good hands with this guy. Um, he knows what he's doing. So, okay. Property market. Let's see. What else can we talk about property market wise? Um, is there new inventory? Is there used inventory? What's, what's the deal? Yes. There's new, there's new inventory and there's old inventory. There's resale value. 
Uh, and there's con there's there are new projects that are constantly coming online. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in terms of getting a better deal, would you say look at a project or you look at a you know a resale? What we call again that comes on a case by case scenario on what you plan on purchasing the property for. Uh, if you're going to be looking for an Airbnb, um, look at one of the new projects that's coming online that's right on the water. Uh, but you can also find some great deals and some been around for five to ten years. Yeah, sure. And those would be resales then. That's correct. Okay, cool. And, you know, is it a range? Like, you know, we talked about Buenaventura, we talked about Chame. Like, how to say a place like Buenaventura compared to Gorgona in terms of properties? Sure. Well, Buenaventura is a luxury golf resort. Uh, it's on your high end of property in the beach areas. So that's going to that's gonna be considerably more expensive uh, as far as price goes compared to what you're going to see in Gorgona, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, not a, the super luxury that you see with Benaventura, but still a very nice property. Sure. Yeah. And Gorgona, you know, is right next to Coronado. So it's kind of like, you know, you can maybe get a better value living just outside of town than versus just in town. Um, okay, cool. And we didn't talk about golf. And in case we got any golfers on here, <laughs> um, you mentioned Buenaventura as a golf course. You also, I think, alluded to uh, Coronado having, excuse me, some golf. Um, what's what's the deal with with golf out there? Most of the golf, most of the uh, beach communities have their own golf courses. So Coronado has a semi-private golf course where you can be invited by a, by a member, or a member could you know let let you onto the course. Uh, you also have Buenaventura, which is an extremely extremely nice golf course. Um, Something like uh, Bihau, which we haven't mentioned yet, has a nine-hole golf course. Same thing with Casamar, which is a nine-hole golf course that is that has lights. It's the only golf course in Panama where you can play at night. And uh, and as far as greens fees goes, you're going to spend around fifty fifty five dollars and up. Okay, cool, awesome. Um, we're getting a couple of questions here. Financing, um, <laughs> financing is doable, but it's a little tricky. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's not something you're going to be able to do online per se. You got to come out here. You got to meet with the bankers. You got to, you know, substantiate your income. Uh, and they like if you are a resident or if you are in your process of getting residency. Now, if you attended our last webinar, we also talked about some some properties that are offering developer financing, which is really cool. Uh, you know, the Burn Group is doing that. Uh, we've got some nice inventory out there and and and, and some condos. Uh, right on the beach in Gorgona, owner financing, or excuse me, well, seller financing, in this case, the developer. But mortgages can be gotten, but like everything in Panama, it's uh, it can be a bit tricky. Um, Sue, in terms of comps, obviously you've got some classified websites which show the asking price of the property. So in that sense, the market's fairly transparent because you can see, we'll call it 95% of what's for sale at any given moment. As far as closed sales, it's a bit tricky. We have our ways to check the history in buildings. So, you know, apartment by apartment to see what's sold in those apartments, but it's not as easy to like a Zillow or a Trulia where you can hop online, uh, look at the history of the property and comparable sales. So yeah, I we do have an MLS also, um, Matthew, what do you think? Probably about 10% of the listings. Yeah, it's still in its infancy right now. So 10, maybe 15% of the listings. Yeah, on the MLS. And that's a bit more transparent, but it's still, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit tricky. Um, but you know, we've, we've been out here and doing business for the last 12 years. So we have a pretty good sense of what things are selling for, but we, we also have ways to research a bit deeper, calling colleagues, getting information from developers, uh, to sort of you know, support, um, decision-making. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Let's see what other costs do you have besides the price of a property? Great, great question. So let's see on the buyer's side. So let's say I'm buying a condo, um, a brand new condo. You're going to have to contribute to the initial homeowners association fund, and you're going to have to register the deed. And registering the deed is the more expensive side of that. Um, you'll need an attorney to do that. Um, figure what about three quarters of a percent? 
more or less. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, 200 grand. What is that? Uh, $1,500. Did I do the math right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, about, about three quarters of a percent. The seller's side is the one who bears most of the cost of the transaction. Sellers pays the commission, which are anywhere from, you know, we'll call it three to 6%. And they also pay the taxes on the conveyance. So you've got transfer and capital gains tax, which ends up being about 5%. So on the seller side, you've got about 10% plus legal fees, you know, another 1500 or so. Um, so yeah, roughly 10% of the sales price for the transaction itself is borne by the seller and less than 1% uh, is borne by the buyer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Clint, you missed it. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, we missed it too. Clint has just said, I just missed the first 45 minutes of this. And uh, yeah, we actually started about 15 minutes late because Matthew and I, both Americans, forgot <laughs> that uh, good old daylight savings, we don't have that in Panama, so all good. We will have a replay of this webinar. Um, and uh, Clint, if you wanna stick around towards the end, feel free to just jam out any questions. Um, let's go to the next slide here. What should I be asking about, but I don't know enough to ask about. And of course, this is a chance for you guys to ask all your questions, but Matthew, I mean, what have we not covered here? I mean, uh, well, that's a good question. What have we not covered? Um, entertainment, we've discussed some of the fees, uh, which is something that I always advise people to look into. Uh, find out what your HOA fees are going to be. Uh, well, what we call here maintenance. Um, what are typical maintenance fees? Like for a for a hundred meter condo, mm -hmm. um, what are my holding costs going to be? Let's say the condo is you know uh, three years old, so you got some tax exoneration still. Right. Yeah, and so that was actually something else I, I was going to mention was your tax exoneration. A lot of the properties here will still qualify for tax exoneration. Okay. That's something you want to ask every every home you go into. Does this house or does this apartment uh, qualify for tax exoneration? And if it's not exonerated, what are the taxes? Again, that that's going to vary according to the property. Yeah. Um. Typic, Just, yeah. Ballpark figure. Yeah. I mean, ballpark figure. If you got it, it's if it's two hundred grand, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to have your 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 standard exoneration, which now is like one hundred eighty thousand. I think that's they right. just changed the law. So then, depending on how you're using the property, if it's personal use, then you've got 0.075 percent. Not even one percent, uh, uh, three quarters of a percent on what's left. So you, you, two hundred thousand minus one eighty, twenty grand. You know, point zero seven five percent. No, it's point zero six percent if it's personal use. So property taxes are very very low in Panama, even when they're not exonerated. And that's new. That's like a year old, if that. Uh, there's a chart. Um, Okay, and then homeowners association again, hundred meter condo. What am I going to pay per meter and something like that? So the pool, gym, all that. Sure, sure. Typically, we see that around a dollar seventy five, two dollars ballpark figure per meter. Per meters too. So you're going to pay about two dollars per meter. Uh, so you're just talking about two hundred dollars a month. Cool. Yeah. Any other costs? I mean, let's say I'm an investor, mm -hmm. um, property management, for example, you know, I want to rent it out, maybe Airbnb, which sure. a lot of people do out there. Yeah. If, if you have a property manager, the, the standard charge or fee is 10% of the monthly uh, rental income. Okay, cool. So let's do that real quick. Mm -hmm. Um, schools. Yeah. We totally didn't talk about that Earl and we will immediately. Um, so, I lost my train of thought. What were we getting ready to talk about? Uh, about the property manager. And oh yeah, about the numbers on a rental, mm -hmm. right? So you buy that two hundred thousand dollar property, Airbnb it. What do you think? Eighty bucks a night? Sure. For two hundred grand, right? And you probably these days. I mean, <laughs> two weeks ago, uh, pre-Corona. <laughs> you know, I don't want to call it hysteria because you got to be smart and responsible. Pandemic. But pandemic. Yeah. Pre. Pre coronavirus break, um, 80 bucks a night, uh, figure 60% occupancy is, 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 is fair. Um, if you can, you really tweak it, there's ways to get a lot more occupancy out of Airbnb. There's some seek to their algorithms in terms of, you know, you give the property a name, you upload the floor plan, 
um, different different things you solicit reviews. But anyway, let's do 60%, 31 nights. Um, I don't know, what is that? Like 20 nights a month kind of thing. 80 bucks, 1600 gross. Out of that 1600 gross, um, you would be pulling out homeowner association, which is 200. Right. Uh, for Airbnb, property managers, we would charge you a bit more as 15%. So 1600, 160, plus 80 is 240. Mm -hmm. um, I've already kind of lost the count of, of where we're at tallying. 440. All right, 440 in costs off year 1600, maintenance and repairs, et cetera. So you'd probably clear, let's call it 1200 a month um, after all your costs. Not bad, you know, not bad at all, actually. Um, Matthew's got every property we've got. He mm -hmm. can give you a sense of, you know, really specific. And this is a very general sense. But uh, yeah, that's the deal with Airbnb. Schools, schools, Clint. Um, or no, that was, that was Earl. And what's up with schools out in the Coronado area? Well, now there, there's quite a few international schools okay. uh, that are accredited, um, very popular with uh, the young families that are moving out there. Sure. Again, if this question were asked to me eight or nine years ago, it'd be a different story. But as Coronado has grown, the population has grown. Obviously, they see a need. That's one of those niches. And now that you have quite a few uh, private schools out there. Yeah, you really do. Um, I've seen it, too. I mean, we both have school-age kids. We both would love to live at the beach. <laughs> um, Matthew spends a lot of time out there, of course. But, um, yeah, I mean, schools, you got the range. Public schools, not so much. You don't want to do public schools out there if you, if you can help it. But there are some great some smaller private schools, some larger private schools. And then you get into like areas like La Chorrera, which would be a half an hour drive, maybe 35 minutes if you're hauling. Uh, and then you've got exceptional private schools, um, including some new ones out in uh, Costa Verde, a, you know, English or French, multilingual, classy, brand new facilities. Um, yeah. So water quality. Uh, Joe, great question. You want to answer that one? And we're talking, let's talk drinking water and swimming water. Sure. Um, well, well, we'll address drinking water right away. Um, I drink straight from the tap. I think the water quality is just fine. Yeah, not an issue. Yeah. Uh, and as far as swimming, you know, going out to the beach, uh, the Pacific side is the black volcanic sand. It's very fine. And uh, again, the water is very nice. It is actually was surprising to me when I first moved here to find how, how warm the Pacific waters were. Yeah, yeah. I just got back from Hawaii, which is where I'm from, and it was a lot colder, <laughs> um, that ocean, than uh, uh, Coronado area. Um, okay. Yeah, and, you know, Matt, you said black sand. I would say it's it's a range, mm -hmm. right? Salt and pepper, uh, kind of marketing, salt and pepper. Um, but, no, I mean, and then you get out to the islands, uh, which we haven't even gotten into yet, the Pearl Islands. Uh, down by Pedasi, Isla Iguana, uh, Playa Venal. We're going to do a Pedasi webinar here in a couple of weeks. Um, similar questions with our, our Pedasi team. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like, swimming-wise, it's fine. Currents, non-issue. Fishing, surfing, stand-up paddleboarding, open water swimming. All of that is fine. Um, yeah, and, and clean. I mean, you don't have the issue that we have in the city, which is we used to dump um, sewage into the water. So we've got a few years before you can start swimming in that ocean here in Panama City. Um, closest swimming beaches to Panama City, Veracruz, but it's a little shallow out there. You know, Gorgona Chame is gonna be your closest swimming beach if you live in the city, and that's 45 minutes. Um, all right, great questions, you guys. Let's keep going. I'm gonna work backwards here. Ralph, we missed your HOAs. On average, about $1.50 to $2.50 a meter. Population. Panama, we've got a census coming up. So the census is, I've heard, what do you think, Matt? Four million? Yeah, for the entire country, about four million. That's what that's what it's probably gonna come in at, right? Yeah. Of which I would bet at least a million of those people are foreigners. Oh yeah. Easily. At least. Um, which is cool. Like mm -hmm. twenty-five percent is a nice number. Um, so population in Coronado. And like the whole beaches zone, golly, that's a that's a tough one to answer because you have a lot of people that that only live out there during the weekend. Good point. 
Yeah, good point. How much does it swell over the weekend? Like, is it is it dead during the week or like what's? Coronado is very much alive during the week uh, because of the shopping centers. Uh, a lot of the expats that live out there full time, those are going to be your full time residents. Uh, but then during the weekend, I mean, it, it depending on the holiday weekend. If it's if it's a normal two day weekend, you're going to get a lot of people out there. Yeah. Uh, now the three day weekends or holiday weekends, it's you're going to see a huge boom in the economy. Yeah, yeah, it gets a little, it gets crazy, but you know, it doesn't get like for our American clients, uh, doesn't get like Myrtle Beach no, no, not style, at all. you know, I never, uh, just because it's not set up like that, and it's and it's dispersed enough where everybody's going to the beach, but they don't <laughs> always go to Coronado, they don't always go to the ocean at the same time, so it's not like you're gonna get you know traffic jams per se. Although on a Friday afternoon, everybody coming into town for the weekend, it it it. It does sort of it picks up. It gets it gets alive, and it's cool. Yeah. And to expand upon that, um, I don't know about where you're from, but where I'm from, Fort Lauderdale, Miami area, people like to lay out their beach chairs and their and their towels, and they just lay out on the on the sand all day. Panama is not similar in that culture, so it's not you're not next to each other. You'll never feel overcrowded in the no. beach. No, no, quite the contrary. Although you know we've been going up to Santa Clara um, on the weekends, and that's cool because you know sometimes a nice little dense population mm -hmm. is fun for people watching you got eight or ten restaurants right on the ocean santa clara is cool uh and that's you know 25 30 minutes from coronado um so an hour and a half from the city you know you rent a little cabana for mm -hmm. 20 bucks and it's got a hammock in there it's right on the water and you got table service it's it's fun it's yeah. you know we go out with the kids it's great um all right we've got some more questions here Pensionado program, medical costs, Susan, Suzanne. Um, yeah, I mean, Pensionado is awesome. And we need to do a webinar on that alone. But you got some great deals. You get discounts on your power bill. You get discounts at the restaurants. You get discounts on travel. And that's, what is that, 60 something, Matthew? Yeah. How old do you have to be? Do you remember? For men, I believe it's 60, and women, it's 55. All right, cool. For all those folks, um, yeah, and that's that's great. Medical is cheaper, and I mean, I've had two babies here, multiple surgeries, um, you know, and it's uh, we go to Hospital Nacional. There's a Johns Hopkins here as well. Uh, impeccable. I mean, really, like specifically National Hospital Hospital Nacional. Um, you know. Uh, insurance is very inexpensive. I'm, I just turned 40. I pay $400 a month, um, for great coverage for my wife and two kids. Um, you know, I mean like you get your teeth cleaned out of pocket, 60 bucks, you know, so we, we, it's not a litigious society down here. People are not suing people. So you don't have all these, you know, buffers in your insurance and it's just all this fat in there. Um, you could definitely find English speaking doctors, um, cause most of them are trained overseas. Obviously a doctor is going to be very educated. Um, all right. What else here? Living inside a gated community versus outside of the gated community. Ralph, great question. Matthew, talk to us about that. Those differences. Yeah. Again, that's a matter of uh, personal preference. Um, some people are used to the security of being behind a gated security, um, um, community. Um, as far as being, you know, you'll, it really depends on where you are. Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe you could expand upon it. Um, you know, it's, you don't have to have it, yeah. right? It's not. I mean, I, I, I it, when I was speaking earlier about that house at the end of the street that was left empty for two months, uh, and and people kind of got wind and maybe broke in and stole the stole the TVs or whatever. That doesn't happen that often. Uh, you can't say it never happens. But you don't have to live inside a gated community by any means. Mm -hmm. Probably 70% of the expats and Panamanians, 7% of the inventory um, in the beaches communities is not gated. Uh, and I'm talking about houses. You know, inherently condos are essentially gated because, you know, you, you pass through security, you have keyed access, et cetera. Um, but yeah, I mean, crime is, is, is not really a factor, um, although it's always a consideration. In life um yeah so hopefully that clarified brian how fluent does your spanish need to be to communicate in panama 
I mean, people are cool. People love when you try to practice your Spanish with them. Both Matthew and I are very comfortable in Spanish. Um, it helps, uh, but you're not going to be judged if you don't speak Spanish. I mean, we both know expats mm-hmm. down here forever who don't speak any Spanish. And they've survived. Mm-hmm. Um, and people like to practice their English on you as well. So that's, that's kind of fun. Um Graham, just connected. Hi, South African farmer. Um, cool. Welcome. You missed some of the presentation, but that's okay. We're going to be sending a recording. Um, Ron, flights and airports, right on. So there is a uh, regional airport out in the Coronado area. It's, it's in Rio Alto, mm-hmm. so closer to Buenaventura. We'll call it an hour and 20 minutes from Panama City. Uh, they have, what do they have? Maddie, they've got um, well, like they have charters direct, and stuff. Well, they have charters, and then they also have direct flights from Toronto. Um, so it's actually more of an international airport, and it continues to grow. It's getting there. Yeah, it's getting there. Um, and then you also have Tokoman International, which is the main airport here in Panama City. And from there, you could be out in Coronado in a little under 90 minutes. Yep, yep, because you've got to drive across the city there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the answer, Ron. Is And, man, flights, woof. I don't know where you're checking in from, but we've got flights galore um, hundreds of daily nonstop flights, probably a few less these days. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, like Panama is a hub. So you've got direct nonstop to um, Florida, Texas, California, um, Seattle, Las Vegas, New York, DC, um, nothing in London yet, but Madrid, Amsterdam, Germany, um, Toronto. Uh, not sure if we have Vancouver yet. We got any directs from Vancouver? Not that I'm aware of. There uh, might be. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but anyway, we got because again, Panama is sort of a hub for Latin America, um, both as the canal and airline wise. Um, yeah. Uh, Lori, pre-construction developments. Absolutely. We 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 have pre-construction developments. How many people in Panama and living in the city? About a million, Hans. Um, that's, that's the population more or less, but that's also including some suburbs. I've heard as low as 800,000 in the city proper. So kind of a small city, but man, restaurants galore, um, pet friendly. Yeah. I, I would say it's pet friendly. And more so over over recently, uh, you're starting to see restaurants, you know, with water bowls outside. So when you bring your dog to, to a cafe with you. Especially at the beach, mm-hmm. but even in the city, you know, like some of the uh, uh, hardware stores, you know, you see people walking around with their little toy doggies. Um, but yeah, pet friendly. There's no stigma here. People are not, you know, um, fussy about that. Um, Yanni, okay, yeah. Uh, how can you get a job with us? <laughs> Send your resume. How's your Spanish? Um, guys, I mean, let's see here. Oh, When's the best time to visit? Anytime, really. Um, right, right now, as I mentioned before, we're in the middle of our dry season, so this would be our, considered our busy season, which is from January to I don't know what would you say, probably about May, uh, and then we start getting into the rainy season. And as we were explaining before, we were talking about the weather, uh, especially out in Coronado, the dry area of the country. It'll rain for thirty minutes, maybe an hour, and then people just go on with their day. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, peak season, as Matt said, is is up through about May. I'm from Hawaii. It's very similar. You know, the rain in the morning, rain in the evening, um, and then kind of clear up. We don't have days on end where it's just raining, raining, raining. You might get kind of cloudy, cloudy, cloudy for a couple of days straight. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the contrary of that is crazy. Like from late December up until April or May, even in Panama City, it might rain like four times in those four to five months it's 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 just wild but uh, there's there's no bad time to visit um okay cool yeah yadi shoot me a private message there um tina sorry if we missed you um ibiza i mean um it's the project has a few years is a few years old it's smaller floor plans i would check it out first it's in the floodplain so it's kind of uh, an issue, uh, Maddie. I mean, we don't really sell that project mm-hmm. for a couple of reasons. Um, I don't want to be disparaging um, in front of a group of people, but um, yeah. Any any comments on that one, Ibiza? 
uh, again, visa residences. Yeah, much like yourself, I kind of stay away from that project. Um, don't get too involved with that one. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's it's also um, we don't really specialize in stuff, say under you know eighty thousand, mm -hmm. because a lot of private sellers don't work with develop work don't work with agencies like ours uh, for stuff that say under hundred thousand, unless it's land. Um, Ralph, water goes off. Need to have a water and tank. Yeah, you do get that sometimes. Uh, I would say out in Coronado when they're replacing the line. Um, most homes and condos do have reserved water. Uh, it's not like you're going to go for days without water by any means. Uh, it's a matter of a hey, utility water's off, reserve shuts on. Um, you know, be be conscious about the water until utility goes back on. But it's not. Um, I don't think it's a lifestyle. It's I don't think it's going to affect your. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Bahia and Gorgona, yeah, great project, Joe. We like that. Good developers. That's Corsion. Great location. Nice amenities. And um, sorry, pass the mic to our expert here. <laughs> well, Bahia. Uh, Bahia is a tremendous project. Mm -hmm. uh, right on the water. The apartments are beautiful and um, very well constructed. It's a beautiful property. Yeah, no, it came out nice. What is that about? <laughs> seven years old now. Yeah, about there. Yeah, cool. Um, all right, so let's keep going here. Ah, question and answer. We've kind of been inserting that a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, like really that, that concludes our curated custom and question and answer. I don't know if you guys have any other questions that I might have missed. I think we literally got all of them though. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm just scrolling through here on the other screen to make sure that we've gotten to everyone. If I haven't, like, write your message again. Um, I really think that we've covered everyone. And you guys have been great. I love that everyone's asking so many questions. Um, Vistamar, Vistamar is interesting, Gary. Um, Vistamar, there's a lot of inventory for sale. Um, houses and condos out there, they've got a golf course. Mm -hmm. That's nice. They just expanded it. Um, Vista Mars where you can get a really good deal, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I mean, what other comments can we give about Vista Mar? Uh, I actually like Vista Mar a lot. They have the Marina out there. That's they, right. They have the golf course, uh, and there are some great deals. Um, I, I, I'd encourage you, Brian, or, or sorry, Gary, if you're interested in that, in that area to give us a call or shoot us an email this week. Definitely. Yeah. And Brian on the Spanish question, you don't have to be fluent, but it, it helps. Um, you know, and I, it's nice. Part of the part of the challenge. I came here uh, not speaking a word of Spanish. What? I didn't and know then that. after two years, uh, consider myself you know close to fluent. And now after ten years, I'd say I'm fluent. Yeah, no, Matthew can hang. He's being <laughs> modest. Um, yeah, definitely. Sorry, I keep moving in and out on this little uh, uh, camera here. But um, yeah, I mean, again, Panamanians are very understanding, very patient. They're excited when you speak a little Spanish, and if you can throw out some slang. You know, like dude or man or shucks or whatever, you will become endeared to them immediately. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, it's it's funny. Uh, we can do a whole another webinar on Panamanian slang just to bring you up to speed real quick. As soon as you get off the airport and you start throwing on slang at the taxi driver and your 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 cost goes down like five dollars from the airport. <laughs> um, why should you buy versus renting? Well, Ralph, it depends on your situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people would ask the question in reverse. Why should you rent before buying? Um, yeah, I mean, that's an interesting one. I think obviously it's a cash flow consideration for someone who maybe doesn't have the money yet. It's a comfort level. You know, try before you buy is, is never a bad idea. You know, you could stay in an Airbnb for a month or two. Um, the nice thing about Panama is you've sort of got a safety net in that we still have a rental market, you know, so you end up buying, you know, maybe as the grandkids get older or start getting born, um, five years later, 10 years later, you move back to where you came from. Uh, either you can sell in which case you are beholden to the market. Um, or you can rent it out and have a, a cash flowing investment. So, yeah, I mean, there's always, I would say there's no difference between the buy or rent decision in Panama versus other markets. Um, 
let's see, financing is not as easy and not as cheap here. Mm -hmm. Although you can get developer financing for a little bit less than the bank. Bank rates are, we'll call it between six and a half and even 7%. They might've come down a little bit with the recent drop this last week. Um, so let's call them six, but uh, yeah. Coronado Bay, is there still a lawsuit? You know, there was a lawsuit in Coronado Country Club um, with the homeowners association versus someone that had gotten hurt in a pool. I don't know if that's been cleared up. Have you heard about that in the last I'm couple of weeks? Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, Angela, we can find out though. Sue, if you want to shoot us a private message, uh, me or Maddie, whatever. Um, recap project in Chame, never heard of it. You? No. Nope. Yeah. Sorry, Joe. And we know most projects. So what upper or what? And guys, what we don't get to, you can always email us. Um, this was recorded, Angela. We kind of missed the beginning too. We started about 10 minutes late. Everybody's been very patient with us. Um, yeah, I mean, unless there's any other questions coming in, I think that, um, I think we covered a pretty good amount to give you guys a flavor. And guys, it's a buyer's market. Um, you're in very good hands with, with Matthew, with Panama Equity, with our whole team in terms of supporting you. Uh, I think if you haven't been down here, hopefully this has sort of opened your eyes to the fact that it's very expat friendly. Uh, the timing is good to be looking at something. There are always deals to be had. It's safe. Panamanians are lovely people. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice lifestyle. No snow ever. <laughs> <laughs> Temperature wise, doesn't get below, you know, at night up in the mountains, you might get down to like upper sixties, but at the beach, wind is blowing at night, the coldest mid seventies, probably <laughs> with highs in the, in the mid nineties or, you know, 35 degrees, even 40 degrees on a super hot day at noon. Uh, Dominique, this was recorded. Uh, Graham, do you anticipate more development around Calo Huevora? Oof. Yeah. That's for another webinar, buddy. That's the mountains and that's the interior. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, Santa Fe has been, let's shoot me an email on that one. Um, we don't do a whole lot in Veraguas, but I'm happy to answer some questions about that. Graham, your question about Santa Fe and Calo Bebora, which is like from where we're sitting now in Panama City, four hours. Um, yes. Okay, there's, hold on, Angela. I'll check this link here. You know, I remember seeing something on this. It says under construction. Um, I always. Recap investments. Yeah. I don't know about this project. Um, so, yeah, we can we can look into it, Angela, if you want to shoot us a line. Uh, we do some business out in Chame. We know most of the projects. So usually our company philosophy, you know, I'm the managing director. I've started the company and the owner. And the way I like to approach developers is, A, have you done anything in Panama? If not. I need to see you out of the ground. I need confirmation on developer financing and I want to see a certain level of pre-sales before it's going to get pushed to our sales team. That's And that's probably why this recap uh, project has not come across our radar. But uh, yeah, I mean, we're happy to vet it on your behalf um, and answer any questions. Matthew's been through, you know, that process with developers many, many times over the years. So, um, yeah, I mean, golly, it's already been an hour. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hope to meet all of you in person. Uh, hopefully you found this uh, insightful. You know how to find us on email and always PanamaEquity.com. And uh, stay safe. Looking forward to seeing this coronavirus run its course and everyone get back to normal. Uh, hope this all finds you very well. Um, Take care. See ya.